okay, I want to start a new uh, lecture series for introductory physics. And this is not the book that I want to use. This is not the book that I use, but I want to use a basic book and I just want to go over and give a review. I'm going to be using this. This is uh, Halliday, Resnick, and Walker, um, ninth edition. And I think pretty much if you look at the, the contents, this kind of book is very, most of them are pretty much the same. So this is a calc and space book. I want to give a chapter review for each chapter, not every single chapter, but most of the chapters, and let's see how far I can get. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. This chapter is on measurement, um, and if you look at the review summary right here, um, SI units, measurements, changing units, and then there's really not a lot here. Okay, so instead let me do uh, the following. Say this is your first semester. A lot of people just skip that chapter anyway. Um, let me put a little note here. SI, really, and units. That's really the only thing in there. Let's go ahead and do that. So in, in SI, un, system of units, we use the following units are preferable. Um, let's see, SI would be meters, kilograms, seconds. And pretty much everything can be made up of those units. And how do you get what units it's made up of? Uh, you, you, you'd go back to the equation. So one trick is to use the equation. So here's a, a scalar equation for net force, F net equals MA. Well, this is in newtons, that's in kilograms, that's in acceleration. And so how do you get all that? Well, I could go over here. Acceleration is um, the, the change in velocity with respect to time. And then the velocity is the change in position. So it's going to be the change in the change in position with respect to time over the change in time. So I have meters, seconds, seconds. So I have meters per second per second. So that's acceleration. Mass is in kilograms. So that means that the force in newtons, one newton, is equal to one kilogram times one meter per second squared, which is a kilogram meter per second squared. Okay, let's talk about unit conversions because that's one of the things that comes up a lot too. Um, how do you convert units? You multiply by one. So let's just do a quick example. Uh, I want to convert uh, 30 kilometers per hour into meters per second. Okay. Uh, so what we do is say V equals 30 kilometers per hour. And if I multiply that by the quantity one, I don't change anything. So I can do that. I can say uh, 1,000 meters is equal to one kilometer, right? They're the same thing. So if that's true, then these kilometers, I can treat these as variables. They essentially are, uh, and I can cancel them. So now I'd have 30 times 1,000 meters per hour. Now I need to convert hours into seconds. Well, I could convert hours into minutes. So I know that I want to put one over one, right? And I want the hours on top, hour. And I want the minutes on the bottom. So now I just need to know how many of one is in the other. Well, I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. And now I want to convert, then the hours cancel. Now I want to convert minutes, so I can say uh, minute seconds. And again, I can say 61 and the minutes cancel. So now I'm left with just meters and seconds. So the velocity is going to be 30 times 1,000 divided by 60 times 60, which is 3,600. And that's, in, and that's in meters per second. And I, I didn't do the, the math, so apologize for that. Um, okay, let, here's the other most common uh, problem that you come up with, and that's converting uh, things that are raised to power. So let's say I have a volume is equal to, that's a capital V, um, 10 cubic centimeters. And I want to convert that to cubic meters. Well, I'm going to, again, you could say, well, I'm going to multiply it by uh, a meter over a centimeter, right? And then so I know that there are 100 centimeters in one meter, and, and I'm done. But you're not done. Aha! Stop you right there. Because you notice here I have centimeters cubed and I have a centimeter, so that actually they don't cancel. One way I can fix that is to cube this. So this would be equal to 10 centimeters cubed times one meter cubed over 
uh, this is going to be 100 times 100 is 10,000. So it's a million to 1 times 10 to the 6. Is that right? 10 to the 6 centimeters cubed. And then when I divide uh, this, I get this is equal to the centimeter cubes cancel. I get uh, 1, 10 to the 1 times 10 to the negative 6 meters cubed, right? Because I just put that up on top. So this is going to give me uh, 10 to the negative fifth cubic meters. Okay, now let's talk about what is not in this chapter. You're starting your introductory physics course, and you need to know what you need to know beforehand. That's important. Okay, the first thing is algebra. And I, I'm writing that down, but it is so important, right? So you need to be able to uh, solve equations, uh, solve um, a system of equations. So something like, um, trying to think of a good example. Well, two equations, two unknowns. I'll just write it down. Even probably won't do three equations, three unknowns. Um, you need to know your trig. So you need to know the definition, uh, cosine, uh, sine, tangent, uh, inverse cosine, uh, inverse sine. Um, you, you don't use, I guess you do use inverse tangent sometimes. You need to know that cosine is a ratio of sides, right? This comes up a lot. It's a right triangle. If that's some angle theta, and let's call this A, B, and C, then you need to know that the cosine is the ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it's just the ratio of A over B. And since this is a right triangle, that can't be greater than 1. That's so important to remember. Uh, don't forget about units. Uh, that The units matter when you're entering this in a calculator, whether you're in radians or degrees modes. So make sure you're careful about that. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse, tangents opposite over adjacent. And then the inverse tangent just gives you uh, what angle gives you that ratio. It's all about ratios. If you know that, you'll be fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about secant, cosecant, cotangent. I don't think you really need to know that. I'm just being honest with you here. But you need to know trick. You need to know that it's about right triangles. Uh, double angle formula, I don't think you need to know that. Uh, when you do, you can look it up. Um, the other trick thing you definitely need to know that uh, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, that's important. Uh, trig. Okay, now what about calculus? Um, this one's tough because it really depends. I believe that you can come into this course while you're in calculus and you can figure a lot of stuff out. I think a lot of people understand derivatives based on how they do it in physics. So you need to know things like velocity in the x direction is the derivative of x with respect to time. And what is a derivative? I love the definition um, uh, that looks like this. The limit as delta x goes to zero of x minus delta x over uh, v of x minus v of x minus delta x. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah, that's the limit. No, I didn't do that right. Delta t. <laughs> this is equal to uh, the limit as delta t goes to zero, sorry, of x of t minus x of t minus delta t over uh, delta t. That's better. That's the definition. But we're not gonna, you're not going to use that, but you do need to understand what it actually tells you, right? If I have uh, a position versus time graph, and I want to find the derivative, it's the slope of this curve at that particular point. I think that is important. In terms of integration, uh, in the first semester, um, I'm trying to think of, I mean, you do do some integration. It's not a lot. But just like uh, the, the fundamental rule, one of the fundamental rules of calculus is that an integral is an antiderivative, which is actually kind of weird if you think about it. Uh, the best way to think about an integral is the area under a curve. Uh, this is really important if you do like v versus t uh, and you want to find delta x. Delta x is the integral 
from T1 to T2 of V dt. And so one of the ways we can do that is to break these into little boxes of length dt, that's a dt, and this is V, and then just add it up. Um, really in terms of integral, power rule, and trig functions, you need to know um, power rule, power rule, trig functions, um, that's probably about it. In terms of derivatives, I don't think you'll be doing uh, too much where you'll need um, the, the integration by parts or things like that. Um, derivative, you again need to know the power rule. A trig. Um, chain rule. It doesn't come up too much. But again, like if you're not super up on your calculus, there's a lot of stuff that you really don't need calculus for, so I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, but like I said, a lot of faculty were just going to fly through chapter one because there's really not much there. Uh, okay, well I'll do the next video on chapter two. Uh, I'm not going to do problems in between. I'm just going to do all the lectures so that you can look at those. I may do some examples um, when just by including uh, numerical calculations that aren't in the book, even though I shouldn't do that, but we'll just see. Um, so if you have any questions about this stuff, I can, I can answer them, but uh, I'm trying to just get a, a basic lecture series down. Okay, that's that.